All right, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for still being here. Uh, I know part of you may be uh, just one happy hour. I'll go as quick as possible. So let's begin. The topic is about account leakage and its consequences. This is, sounds like a pretty, pretty old topic and boring topic. So why are we still talking about it here right now? There are indeed some new things. One is that we observe that uh, previously, of course, you, you all know, a Taco Bell preferred to uh, attack the central server so that they could grab like millions of accounts in one time. However, most recent years, that they were also trying to attack end users individually. This may partly be because that all of the big companies have already adopted some good security design or implementations to secure the server. Another reason is, another, uh, is uh, because that uh, in recent years, you know, all the, good, all the big companies like Google, Microsoft, Apple, or other companies have already added more and more features into the account, associated with the account, so that it's possible that the target could make more money, find more ways to make money after still those accounts. So this is basically what we will uh, introduce with you uh, today. The reason I choose Apple ID is because I believe that Apple is a company that already should, I can't say already because I'm not working with Apple, that should adopt a lot of uh, good security practices with their, both their server side and their client side on iPhone or Mac OS X. I'm saying this not because that they sponsored our breakfast and lunch yesterday. But uh, I think their reputation is still pretty good. However, even for Apple's ID, we still find, for example, this, this is uh, in last December, that over 700,000 Apple accounts with a password, with uh, some uh, user's information being sold in the darknet marketplace. How this happened? Another reason I choose Apple ID is because that it associated with too many functionalities, too many services that both for your, that around everywhere of your life. So before we uh, start this, I have to say, I am not an expert of the underground market or the darknet or, or something like that. Uh, in Palo Alto Networks, my job is doing research and uh, development around the malware and the antivirus product. However, in past two years, when I was working on some iOS malware families, I found that they are acting some weird. That, you know, classical malware will try to uh, remotely control your system, will try to uh, do some like ransom or steal your information, but Lots of lots of uh, iOS malware just uh, focus on the Apple ID itself, and uh, you will see some examples. This weird things made me to uh, dig into it to find out what's their purpose, because malware's purpose always, or, or say attacker's purpose, always important because only you know their purposes you will deploy really effective signatures to capture those attacks. Okay, let's begin. First uh, is about leakage. Uh, a no surprise topic of, of the account compromise is about phishing. And uh, there, there were about two or three topics in this conference talked about it. And of course, through email. Also, the Apple ID phishing also through the short messages or iMessage and targeted, targeted phishing. This is not advanced at all, but it's still targeted. Those phishing messages happen, especially when, you, when your iPhone or Mac devices being stolen, and you enabled to lock my devices remotely through iCloud. And you can see the first message exactly happened 
when this guy's iPhone been uh, lost, and uh, the message constantly say that uh, your iPhone was found, so that it's more likely it, uh, the owner will click the link. Another message correctly say the name of this owner, which means it's, it's not a generic spanning. At least it's, uh, it has some context about the receiver. Surprisingly, that you know, usually a phishing through the uh, was through some um, email messages and sometimes uh, uh, online chatting. But uh, for Apple ID, there are indeed cases through phone call to fish you, and also targeted. This is the case, and uh, after I prepared the slides, I heard two more cases, which is pretty similar. So after this guy lost his iPhone, he received hundreds of uh, phishing uh, through email and through messages asking him about the uh, Apple ID's password, and he ignored it because identified as phishing. And then he got a phone call finally. The, most of the phone call asked him about the security answers of the security questions, which I will, I will tell you why later. But most of the things is that the phone call, the number is 400, which is exactly the same with the local Apple's official technical support phone number. This is actually a phishing that abused a design flaw in some VOIP gateways that it could uh, make a phone call by arbitrary phone number. For example, it could make a phone call by 911. All right, and uh, there are also some other phishings like through the pop-up ads when you are browsing some website from your desktop or from your iPhone. This is what I made personally in last year. and. Uh, you know what, my favorite part of this phishing website is that, first of all, it designed a logo for Apple, which used the italic font. <laughs> a good suggestion for Apple, and the title is Apple Store, it's not Apple. The second part I, I, I really feel interesting about this website is that in the food it said, if you received this email in the spam folder, click on note spam button, fix it. <laughs> ah, Jesus, okay. Anyway, all of this phishing will eventually lead you to a website like this. Sometimes they're pretty like Apple's official website, sometimes they're not, but eventually they will ask you to input your password or security answers. And Usually, most of them I observed use the, some URLs which contains the keywords about like update Apple, find your iPhone or iCloud, something like this. So there are lots of ways to detect them. Like the, uh, you can find the keywords in the URL, in website, in email, in, short, uh, in the short messages. You can compare similarity, etc. And I think this is, uh, this is some method that you, sh uh, you may be familiar with. Another thing is that another method they use to grab your password to from end user is malware. These are two malware families that I discovered in two years ago. They, re they do require you jailbroken your devices at first. So you know, after jailbreaking, usually as an attack, you can do anything you want. But the most simplest way to grab the password is uh, to hook the system API named SSL right through the mobile substrate instrumentation framework. And through uh, this function was used by Apple in the iTunes store, or Apple store, claim that uh, after you log in, it will use this uh, URL to construct a request to Apple server uh, to, uh, for authentication. So by hooking it, you can, you can get a password. Both of these two families use this trick. So in the key reader case, case that it's very lucky for us that um, one of the researchers that cooperated with us uh, identified a vulnerability in their C2 database uh, so that he actually dumped all the database that uh, this malware collected 
and uh, finally discovered over 200,000 validated Apple ID being stolen. It's a kind of surprise that a jail, jailbreaking uh, plugin could grab so many accounts. Another case is a malware that do not need jailbreaking, and it actually even landed into Apple Store. This one uh, provided services like third-party Apple Store. It provided services to, uh, for you to uh, download uh, iOS apps, pirated or not, permitting or not. It has a functionality that uh, it suggests you to log in your Apple ID through this app, and it listed lots of advantages, lots of additional features, and it claimed that they don't upload the Apple ID or password to their own server, but actually they lied. They were upload. This is not the only case. If we are not, if, if we talk about more other account systems, there are more cases. For example, the install agent and WhatsApp stealer, there are two iOS malware or how to say, okay, I don't use the, the word malware, but those two apps will store your Instagram or WhatsApp accounts in a similar way by providing additional features for users. For example, Insta agent provides functionality say that you could know whoever viewed your Instagram. However, after you input your password, it will upload to the, uh, to the server. And this, this app at least occurred in Apple Store three times. So uh, the third problem is that you have no problem. The end user didn't been cheated, and the server has no problem. But the email you use has some problem. Here is an example that in October 2015, over 100 million email accounts leaked, which all belongs to the same company, LateEasy, which is the most popular email provider in China. And me, myself, is also a user. Uh, Maybe affected, maybe not. I have no idea. But I changed the password immediately. But immediately after the leakage, is that there are followed lots of uh, lots of attacks to log in into Apple ID and lock your phone remotely and ransom for some money. Uh, this uh, this associated because all of these uh, reported cases were all use NetEasy's email box. That's not the end. In uh, in January, in last month, there are like tens or I think thousands, millions of accounts being sold in Darknet, and uh, you can imagine how many of them also registered the Apple ID. And also, there are also like uh, leakages of the malware.ru and Yandex.ru, which is two most popular Russian email providers. And there are also lots of cases of, of uh, Google's account leakage. For example, in, uh, this, this is a case that Android malware steal uh, Google account and password in last year, which affected million accounts. And there are lots of other cases. Uh, the NetEasy case, which was said by official it's not an attack to the server, but just uh, reuse some password, which we cannot uh, verify. But anyway, password reuse is always a, you should consider the issue. And I, I, I think everyone should be familiar with it, so I skip it. And another way is pretty interesting, that email system may have vulnerability in server side, but they may also have vulnerability in the front end. This is just a cross-site a cross -side script vulnerability, which is uh, usually being uh, thought as uh, not so severity, but it's actually being abused, uh, exploited by uh, attackers in the, in the wild to uh, steal your Apple ID. So this is, uh, this is a zero-day intention this email system. And uh, it, it uh, sends the victim a, some kind of targeted phishing email. And uh, this, is a, this is a 
result that uh, reproduced by researcher of this exploit, it could use uh, successfully get the login token of the Tencent's email system website so that they could log in into the email system and recover your iPhone's or Apple's password. I will show you the price of these attacks later. So of course there are brutal force. Brutal force usually people, I guess maybe someone already forgot about it because nowadays everyone, it's a common sense that you should prevent brute force by like capture. However, sometimes if the, if the login, if the API is a backend or, or internal, internal API, if it's not a public services, Sometimes you may forget to prevent brute force like this. This is happening three years ago when uh, some researchers discovered Apple's Find My iPhone functionality has an interface that can prevent brute force and the exploit being public available. And the last one, uh, seriously, this is not a security attack, but uh, I'll show you why, why I talk about this later. So people uh, in the underground, the people also created Apple IDs in bunch. When I say in batch, it means like tens of thousands at least, and then sell it for the Apple store Freud. Okay, the next big topic is how to make profit. So we are not we are not talking about how to uh, we are not talking about those attacks which has some spatial, political, or other purposes. For example, this is a case that a an editor in Wild magazine being attacked that uh, somebody logged into his Apple ID and uh, remove uh, removed all of his uh, data in the iCloud, which uh, no idea why maybe some spatial purposes. This is an obvious a targeted uh, attack and uh, not on purpose for money. But what we want to talk about is how to directly get quick money from those stolen Apple ID. The first one is spam. Spam, you can imagine that uh, advertisement, of course, is one of the most uh, important sources to make money for both internet, for, for everyone, I think, in the in internet industry. But for the underground guys, Spain is, is also one of the biggest sources. So this happened, for example, in last uh, Christmas and Black Friday, people uh, received uh, lots of messages like this. Uh, they are indeed master of the emoji. Yeah. Um, you know, this is actually pretty simple. As an attack, you you even do not need a password. You just need to know a uh, recipient's email address. You could send, uh, send the iMessage. And uh, since Apple added the functionality about report junk, and then they discovered another method to deliver advertisement through iCalendar. So you know, iCalendar, you can invite your friend to participate in a special event like besides through the iCloud. But they, they abuse this to invite the millions of people to uh, some events of uh, purchase something or, or other advertisements. And this is actually not only occurred in your app, but also displayed in your desktop as a notification. You cannot ignore it. And of course, there will be email. But this email is uh, email spam is uh, is a boring topic. But uh, I, but I I personally received uh, a special email which is pretty interesting case I would like to share. This email I received in uh, in the Let Easy email box of mine, and it indeed from Apple. Okay, it's really from Apple. I double confirmed three times. It's officially from Apple without any problem, but the only problem is that usually when Apple call you, when Apple send a message to you, it will say, dear cloud, for what, what, what. But this one's not. This one said, dear, we are professional making fake ID document services and please contact with me, guarantee satisfied. <laughs> Notice that this is from Apple. 
from when Apple has this kind of services. <laughs> so this is obvious that uh, uh, they discovered some kind of like, uh, okay, the content is like somebody uh, choose a mailbox as my rescue email address. So it's like kind of a password recovery services where Apple server believe the user's input as a username as a real name, so this real name field being abused. Yeah, smart guys, smart guys. So reported to Apple and fixed it by removing my name. The next message is deal, that's all. Uh, there are, of course, the second big business of in underground is uh, Apple Store Freud. This is just like to uh, purchasing a house. Every, everything is about location, location, location. You know. A good location in Apple Store could make a successful startup in the Valley. So location is always expensive. This is a, this is a price list about how, how much could help you to promote any app to the top list of the Apple Store. And you can see in the United States, in order to keep your app into uh, top 10 ones, that's uh, 16 grants. And so the Apple Store Freud, of course, has lots of technicals and uh, it, it, it improved a lot. It's always a cat and mouse games. But the most important part for Apple or for other like Google to run the Google Play, one of the most important factor to identify Freud or re to reduce the effect of Freud is that to identify whether this guy is a real people or whether this guy is a uh, Freud activities from the attacker or machine. So all the Freud required lots of uh, Apple IDs. And uh, at the first, uh, they actually re registered like ten, uh, hundreds of thousands of Apple IDs by machine. But later, these are pretty easy to be discovered because those Apple IDs have the same register time, has the uh, same activities, uh, do not have any user's data. So later, they are trying to steal your password and on, on your behavior to, uh, to promote those apps. And not only to promote it to a good location in the top list, but also trying to make some fake reviews or fake ratings because these are important sometimes for, for some developers. So uh, sometimes users may discover that their, their password no change and uh, everything looks fine, but just uh, their, their uh, Apple Store history has some weird that never made reviews or ratings or purchase history. And a target even, uh, even implemented the Freud in the malware. For example, the Apple buyer, which I said that uh, steal your password, it will try to uh, automatically purchase apps, which a uh, command was received from the server. It will, it will make the purchase on the infected iPhone, and which is more likely real, okay? Here is another case that uh, I would like to share. This, this proved that the Apple Store Freud is not only affected Apple's business, but also may affect all the end user. So this is a fake AV I discovered in last December in Apple Store. Okay, this is Mac Apple Store. And actually, you know, in Mac Apple Store, there are lots of low quality antivirus clients. But one day I discovered one of them, I discovered one of them even occurred in the top three, how weird it is. But this one, after analyzing, I found it's a, it's a fake AV or scale well because it will, uh, because it will, uh, it intentionally constructed some bad quality signature, uh, which is uh, in the format of the clan AV which could lead to a false positive to some system files. And it has two versions, one is free, one is premium for 10 bucks. And if you scan the, that lots of like hundreds of malware in your, in your desktop, it will ask you to pay that 10 bucks to clean, clean all of them. But actually, it's all, of the, all of them are of course false positive. 
However, usually those fake IVs shouldn't get in such good position. But after analyzed all the logs of the of the uh, of those days, uh, Apple stores data. It's easy to find that they use the Apple Store Freud to get such a position so that it could get more paid. Some other Freud happened, for example, in the recommendation system that this, this happened when you're trying to search some uh, keywords in the Apple Store client. And uh, those are expensive. For example, in the overall recommendation for any keyword to persist there for like uh, uh, six hours, you need to pay three grants to 10. And uh, even just for a keyword recommendation, you need to pay like, uh, wow, 200,000 per month. Yeah, they constructed lots of, uh, lots of fake requests or research response, search response requests to Apple server so that they cheated the machine learning model. This is a this is a very interesting attack. That this is the first time I see people really trying to uh, attack a machine machine learning thing. Okay, and of course you can you can on your behalf to purchase some app and get money back, um, especially when it's a game that the in-app purchase item could be reselled in in some forums, and this also happened in malware. And the fourth method is, uh, is actually right now pretty popular now that uh, after I get your Apple ID, I could remotely lock your devices and rent them for money, like to unlock it, pay like uh, 0.1 Bitcoin or some gift card. This all usually happens together with they will change your password, they will change your email address, and sometimes they will also change your, uh, change your security questions. Of course, to change your security questions, you need to answer it at first. That's why they sometimes fish you to ask you for your current answers. And yeah, it's also implemented in some malware. And not locking, unlocking is also a kind of way to make business. For example, um, the unlocking is that uh, after your phone being stolen or lost or get by somebody else, that he would like to resell it but you already remotely locked it. They need to unlock it. So this is also expensive. For example, the, uh, okay, of course, we are always lower than the price of the real devices. Uh, for example, that's a cross-site vulnerability. I just said we are sold in like uh, 70 to 300 bucks. And uh, they also provide your services like help you to log in to the system and then unlock a specific iPhone by phishing, by targeted phishing. And here is a problem uh, due to the time, I, can, I, I almost skip it, but I still would like to ask. The problem is that after you got a lost or stolen phone, actually, in theory, it's impossible that you will get the, you will get the full email address because this is by design impossible. However, they could do this. There are some underground services sold in the internet or in the darknet and the price is pretty cheap, that's just 10 bucks. And it has a successful rate. I have no idea why. This is a really a question, why this information leaked and leads to so many attacks. Also, there are some other unlocking methods like to uh, hard, hardly to uh, unsoldering the chips in the, in the devices to uh, unlock it. Uh, but this is not related with the account attack. Lots of things is that uh, you can always uh, try to uh, steal your uh, steal personal data and then make a ransom to you because there are lots of privacy data. In the uh, last year, you may have already known that lots of celebrities uh, photos in the iCloud being stolen and being published in internet. And those photos, uh, yeah, and this guy is one of the tag being uh, jailed right now. Uh, Okay, uh, sorry, it's not right now, being jailed, just. And also, third party Apple Store, this is a novel uh, attack that uh, I recommend you to read my analysis in the company blog. Okay, Nathan Nunn. First of all, it, 
A tag will also attack users individually, not only focus on the server side. And you know, user, end user is always a weak point. Secondly, that all of the features that uh, if you design, if it's an important feature, it will be abused to uh, make profit eventually. And this will speed up the activities of a target end user. So this is what I think some of the companies that not assumed before, and I do recommend you to reconsider the security model of the consistent and trying to identify uh, those kind of stuff in the underground. All right, thank you. Thank you, Sean, Claude. On behalf of Fitbit and B-Sides, thank you for spending your time with us. Thank you. And thank you, everyone. That concludes all the talks for today. And enjoy the happy hours. Questions, definitely contact him on Peerlist or right off this to the side. Would you play? Oh, 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 o